Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of Tech Pizza. This is the format available in newsletter, video and podcast where we take all the crazy stuff that happens in tech and we try to make it easy, simple and democratic like pizza. So this episode is mainly gonna cover what's happening in Solana, a blockchain platform that has some sketchy stuff going on these days. But we're also gonna talk about a bunch of other different things. We're gonna talk about self-driving car safety, we're gonna talk about the EU that is trying to enforce the same charging stuff on different devices, and Meta launching a fashion store for your avatar. Let's get started. A crypto lending platform to control of the account of one of its users. Let's try to understand what this means because it's really bad. It's worse than a bank bailout. There's this big blockchain platform called Solana. It's pretty big at its all-time high. It was worth $80 billion. And there's a bunch of different apps built on it. One of them is called Solend, which allows people to lend and borrow using the Solana blockchain. Now, there's one user on Solend who had a lot of money. He deposited $170 million worth of Solana, which accounts for 95% of all the money ever accredited on Solend. And he used it to borrow $108 million worth of another cryptocurrency called USDC, which accounts for 85% of all the coins borrowed for that specific crypto. What's the problem here? The problem is that this guy had a liquidation price of $22.30, which means that if the price of Solana went below $22.30, a lot of his position will be liquidated, which means that it will be automatically sold. And that will be a big problem for everybody, because if you have a lot of volume of an asset being sold, then the price of that asset goes down. So it was so bad, potentially, because the price of Solana was at $26 dollars at its minimum, very close to 22.3, that the Solent platform decided to do something about it. First of all, they contacted the owner of that account and said, hey, uh, you wanna maybe try to do something to fix this situation? But that person did not reply. And so they decided to vote to take control of this person's account. And that is already pretty bad. It's basically like if you have a bunch of money in your bank account and you have a bad position that could put the bank at risk and the bank takes control of your account, fixes it and then gives it back to you. It's bad, but it gets even worse. When people voted, 90% of the positive votes came from one single person. So there was one person that single-handedly decided to take control over this account, fix it, and then give it back. It's so bad because this is the opposite of the blockchain. The blockchain was supposed to be decentralized and free and outside of the control of, you know, single entities. And instead, that's exactly what happened. Some people got pissed and Solent made another votation to basically reverse what they voted before. And even if this votation passed, I think this says a lot about what's going on in crypto. In theory, philosophically, conceptually, it is decentralized and it's free and people are supposed to do whatever they want. But in practice, there's these huge accounts called whales They have so much power that they can do whatever they want. So much that they can also vote to take control of somebody else's account. And I'm in favor of crypto, but I think we need to be honest with each other. We need to say that a lot of the promises of crypto, decentralization, freedom, etc. are just in practice not happening. And this is just another one and probably the biggest proof of that. It turns out we have no idea how safe self-driving cars are. Exactly, the US Minister of Transportation just published a report of all the crashes that have been recorded from self-driving cars. First of all, we know about just a few in the media, but it turns out that there has been a total of 400 crashes from these cars. And the biggest problem is that we don't know much about these crashes because there's no standardized way for all these different companies to push data about the crashes. What we know is that 70% of crashes happen to Tesla cars, but that may as well be because there are more Tesla autonomous cars than any other vehicle. And another crazy thing that we know is that 75% of all crashes, we have no information about the injuries of the passengers. So this is pretty bad, but it proves, I think, one thing. The technology has evolved a lot. What hasn't evolved yet is a legislation. There are still no clear rules on how these cars should go around the street and no rules about how companies should report their crashes. So every company does whatever they want and the data is a mess because there's all these discrepancies and we don't know, again, 
how many people got injured. And when there's no clear rules, it's a problem because companies can try to play within the rules that exist to bend their numbers and make their cars look safer than they actually are. You cannot afford the Balenciaga's weather? Well, good news, I guess. You will soon be able to buy a digital version for your avatar on Instagram. This is the new announcement that the head of fashion and Instagram just did, and she did it with Mark Zuckerberg showing a picture of him with a cropped t-shirt and a low-rise pair of jeans. How do I unsee this? I still don't know whether people want to spend money in digital clothing, but I think there's a couple of things to say here. First of all, I suspect that if the metaverse actually works, which we don't know, by the way, just let's just suppose that it becomes a big thing, then the digital economy is going to be huge. Think about it. It creates a parallel economy where there's no limitation of supply. You can potentially create infinite t-shirts, infinite sweaters. You don't need to produce them. The cost to produce a digital sweater is zero. And so this is going to be an interesting economy that people are going to want to play with and company going to make a lot of money off. And the other thing that we have to say about this is that Instagram, Facebook, Meta in general, seems to be a little bit confused. If you think about it, this could be a huge thing, right? Companies like Prada and Balenciaga are going to finally sell clothes for avatars, but the press release would just kind of Meh. And we even don't know when this is going to be available. So the company seems to be a little bit, yeah, confused. Do you think the meta is going to be successful with this metaverse stuff? Let me know in the comments. If you have a drawer full of chargers for your iPhone, for your iPad, and for a bunch of different devices, soon you can throw all of them out because the European Union has made a new regulation that is going to force every company to produce devices with the same power adapter. This is going to be enforced from 2026 and it's going to allow us to have an easier life charging devices. It's also going to have a good impact on the environment. The EU estimated that every year 11,000 tons of wasted chargers are just thrown in the garbage. Some companies say that this is going to have negative impacts as well. Apple, for instance, says that this is going to slow down innovation when it comes to new systems of charging, which may be true or not. But I think what's interesting to see here is this is a pretty new and pretty intense push from governments to interfere with product decisions. Governments may make regulations about different things, but they usually don't tell companies how to design their products. And now they're telling them, hey, I don't care about how many cameras the new iPhone has. What I care about is that its charger is going to look like this. And it's going to be exactly like everybody else. So now Google, Apple, Sony, Lenovo, all these different companies are going to have to work together and design a universal charger. Let's see how it turns out. I just hope that they keep MagSafe on Macs because it's pretty cool. Thank you for watching this episode of Tech Pizza. Remember that Tech Pizza is available also as a podcast and as a newsletter. So go on techpizza.live, leave your email, and you're going to be notified every week so that you're always up to date on all the crazy stuff that happens in tech. I'll see you next week. Ciao.